Hey, Odysseus. It is lovely to see you. Hello. Hello, Laura. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Just uh, relaxing, you know, Saturday. So, you know, just uh, about to get my day started. Oh, wonderful. How are you keeping busy during the quarantine business? Uh, uh, very busy. A lot of um, a lot of teaching. I uh, taught um, F and B uh, last night, a a choreography piece, and then I was asked at the last minute to teach also for um, the scene down in Miami. So a uh, part Wonderful. of their uh, fest um, thing that they do every Friday, which is really cool, hosted by Yuval and uh, and Julia. So uh, so yeah, so that was really that was really fun to do. And later on. Today I'll be taking part in the uh, the quarantine uh, Dr. Flory's um, quarantine prohibition uh, uh, thing that he does a variety show that he does. So so yeah, so very busy, very busy. You know, still Good. I'm to glad start to hear this. it. But yeah, keeping that sanity going. <laughs> yes, as much as much as possible, as much as possible. So what I really want to talk about is mm -hmm. these the more you know workshops that you're about to put on. Yes. Um, what yes. is your goal with these? Um, my goal with these is to is to provide instructors tools to be confident and and discussing African American culture history and social context throughout their dance classes. Um, and I'm taking the experiences and the journey that I went through to to get to this moment because you know I've been doing uh, partner dancing for for 20 years and everything like that um, for blues and swing so I do both dances and every time I would bring up the notion of hey you know why not include more history and social context and 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 anything along that line you know I would get like the various top 10 hits of reasons of why um, of why it's hard to do that and and at first, I really didn't know how to respond to a lot of those a lot of those statements because I never really thought about it as you know really took it into consideration to really think about like how can we change this hurdle. So uh, after once again just doing research of like you know just about about various things about the culture, I slowly started to well well first. I brought it to the attention of, of my local dance scene here in New York City um, during our instructors meetup about how we how we should be doing better as, as to include history and social context. And I think it was unfortunately after another string of killing of innocent killings of black people in the country. So um, if I can remember correctly. But and at first, when I first pitched this, a lot of um, a lot of the instructors really didn't quite understand what I was going for, what I was intending to do, which is understandable. So the best option is let me show you what I am talking about. And uh, throughout the throughout the years, through trial and errors, and realizing, oh, let me not say this because that's kind of you know not cool, or like hmm, I can say this a little bit better next time because this point is really important. I I make it a point to try to find the balance of teaching technically and teaching it from a cultural perspective. And, uh, and that's what, so through all of that, all the trials and tribulations with that, I've, you know, I've started to see a lot of students respond positively to what I, to what me and my dance partner were doing in class. So, so now that, that, that has happened and I take mental, and I took mental note of the reactions, I decided, I decided to sit down and go, okay, so this is what has worked for me, and and I want to share that with everybody else because it's not about the fear of being wrong or not knowing what to say or feeling like oh I'm not part of the culture so I have no authority to talk about it is 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 debunked in my opinion my personal opinion. So what uh, so what this is 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 an exercise of going through the phases that I went through myself when I had to ask myself the very tough question and turn the mirror on myself and like, how have I been complacent in all of this? Um, because that's that's the hardest question because we all, let's be honest, don't like to turn the mirror on ourselves to see what our faults are, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but once you do do that, turn the mirror on yourself, and then it's the next question is, do I, okay, this is a strong word, but do I cower away 
and you know and just leave the dance altogether which no one no one wants but or do i make the mindset of like okay i realize this is what i have been doing but i really am truthful and honest when i say i i appreciate or i love the music and the dance and the people what can i do to help change that percep perception and let other people know like this is important to understand the cultural and background and after that it was just first thing, do research, educate yourself, the good and the bad, and figure out why, how all of that is connected and help each other, you know, um, how the good and the bad really help the evolution of the music and the dance that we do today. And why the influence of that music and the dance is still strong, even with modern day music, whether it be pop, hip hop, rock and roll, country music, things like that. So, and, uh, and once you get that education, then you can start to process how do i understand this and from what i've read and how can i then speak about it respectfully in my own words where i'm not sounding like i'm talking from the script um there's nothing wrong with the script i'm a i'm a professional actor so you know i read scripts all the time but in this situation we shouldn't be treating um a a culture a group of people like a script or like like uh, talking about it like it's a biography it's uh uh the saying that's that is going around like this is a living breathing art form mm -hmm. and and we need to respect it and treat it as such so uh so yeah so basically that's what this class is about it's about gaining that confidence and and i will be facilitating on just listening to how people say things but not in a you know, not in a defeat, not in a, not in a defeatism kind of way, but more in a way of like, okay, I see where you're going with this thought process. This is really good, but how about taking out maybe substituting this word with another word because it's coming off as this, and you want to really sound more this way, uh, but not really telling them what to say. And that's the idea: is not for me to tell you what to say or what to write, but for you to find find the comfort in yourself. To speak about it respectfully and also to have the confidence to just say i don't know um so so yeah so that's what uh injustice workshop is about and also there's going to be a lot of hard truths and hard um hard truths in there that we all have to just acknowledge and come to grips with um individually as we participate in this uh, cultural art form you have put in an immense amount of work into this yeah, well, I mean, but it's years of like just contemplating and thinking. It's it's the nerd in me. It's just it, it is what it is. <laughs> well, I'm honored that you've taken the time to share this with me today, and I'm really excited for everyone who's going to get to participate. Um, so, what is the thing you want to see the most from the swing and blues community right now? Uh, so, uh, I've been getting this question a lot um, the past week. Um, the one thing that I personally want to see the most, and I can't speak for everybody else, and, and just a quick aside, this workshop is, from my opinion, perspective, and research that I've done, I'm not speaking for, for you know, uh, Black culture or, or any of the Black dancers in the scene or any of the dancers in the scene. This is just what I have, you know, come to, to uh, experience and, and realize that it could help the scene. So going back to your question, um, what I would honestly like to see going forward is consistency. To me, that's been the really big problem with all of this, what's going on socially. The last time there was an unfortunate string of killings of black people, everyone got in the, you know, in a in a outrage and rightfully so about it. And people were organizations, organizers were, you know, you know, waving a flag of like, Inclusive, inclusivity and and we're going to make an effort to hire more black people which you know i was uh, one of the beneficiary have been you know getting a lot more work so thank you for everyone who um who hired me in the past and hopefully i'll be able to work with more people in the future um but but after that it, it kind of got back in the same routine you know the same kind of oh you know, we really don't need to continue understanding about the culture and the history and stuff like that and, and whatnot. And my kind of 
year, to be completely honest, is that three months, six months, a year, five years, we're going to go right back into the same routine. And that's not what we need. Like, we shouldn't all have to, to, to come to arms whenever there's like a horrific, a horrific, you know, situation that's happening, whether it's in this country or in another country. We should continue, make it a normalized thing of, yes, we are going to, you know, as instructors, try to teach this dance and from a cultural perspective as well and find that balance of technique and also from a cultural perspective and finding that balance and continuing that balance to normalize it. Um, I think the reason that a lot of our students get deer in the headlights whenever an instructor goes and tries to include history and social context is because for every one instructor that actually makes a attempt that you have five or ten that just don't do it at all don't say anything about it or discourages it um mm -hmm. that's and that's a real problem um so if if we as instructors can first look at ourselves and be like hey this is what i've been doing and that's not cool i've been part of the problem um because i was part of the problem and the you know when i self-reflected but then instead of once again running away from that sitting with that, embracing that, and then turning around going, okay, how can I change this into a positive educational um, uh, influence going forward? Um, and, uh, and, and that's where it starts because as instructors, and I will get to this in a workshop, but as instructors, we set the tone and perception of the dance scene. As organizers, we set the tone and perception. As musicians and DJs, we set the tone and perception. So if we, over time, not right away, but over time, normalize, yes, we are going to be talking about history and social context and not all of it's going to be pleasant. You know, we need to, you know, really start treating this as, you know, a living, breathing art form instead of just something that we are, you know, just benefiting from just because it came out of the community. So, uh, so, so that's what I would really like to see is I like to see consistency going forward it's hard it's tough but you know but if we keep just keep at it knowing that we're going to have hurdles along the way then our students are going to expect that our students are going to expect that you know um uh uh expect that kenneth, kenneth is going to talk about history and social context in class i'm going to expect really to talk about history and social context. I'm gonna expect um, Peter Strom or, 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 or Sky or, or Joe to talk about history and social context in their dance classes because every instructor, at least majority of instructors that I've gone to, they've always made the stress that this is important just as much as I think is important. Yep, Hope and you're exactly right. Yes. We're not great about consistency. Um, in the dance community, and that is something all of us, myself included, um, mm -hmm. need to work toward. Yeah, yeah, and it's and once again, I want to really, really iterate this. It's not, and and this isn't me calling out white dancers at all. This is all of us. So black, white, Asian, Latin, Middle Eastern, wherever you are in the world, we all need to do a better job of being consistent, um, as 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 best as we can, and that's all that we can try is the best that we can. There's going to be days where we're going to, you know, slip a little bit, and that's and that's fine. You know, there's no harsh judgment on that. But if you realize that, oh, hey, I could have, could have talked about it a little bit more, then next time you teach a class, just do that. You know, it's not a it's not a life or death situation. So, um, so yeah, so more consistent. That's what I personally want to see. And unfortunately, because of trends and what I've experienced in the past. You know, it's shown that three months, six months, a year, five years, everyone gets back into the same routine, and then it kind of goes down to the wayside again. And and we're back into this argument of people bringing things up and other people, you know, having the audacity to, you know, shout down at, you know, the Black dancers in the scene trying to speak up about, you know, racism and, and lack of uh, fair hiring opportunity. So, um, and then next thing you know, a huge swing of un unfortunate killings of innocent, you know, black people of other people of color or people from the LGBTQIA community happens. And then everyone gets up in arms again and just like, let's just not do that. You know, we could have, we 
could not have this point if we just would have kept to consistency last time or the time before, or the time before, or the time before. So, you know, consistency. That, <laughs> that is our struggle. Yeah. It, it might be the insular bubble that I live in, but I've certainly seen a lot of positive reception to your workshop already. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I, uh, I also had the help of many people that I reached out to not um, uh, to kind of help signal boost and they did and I thank them wholeheartedly you know Milky Way Galaxy size thank you for helping uh, signal the boost because it has reached a lot of people and that's the purpose I want instructors of all levels uh, to be able to attend uh, this workshop so whether you just started last month or you've been teaching since you know 1200. Um, so it's, I feel like a lot, um, a lot of people can get something out of it and, and also it's a chance for us to learn from each other mm -hmm. on top of that. And that's also a very important thing that you can reach out to an instructor that lives in, that, that lives in France or reach out to an instructor that lives in Australia or New Zealand or, you know, or in Africa, um, and stuff like that and just kind of communicate with each other and be able to say, Hey, you know, I'm learning about this, you know, can you, you know, maybe provide some more deeper context in the situation, um, which will also help ease the burden off of the black people who are already putting in the work um, because, you know, getting opinions and advice from people outside the culture is just as valuable as getting opinions and advice from people um, that are part of the, um, that are part of the community, of African American community. So I've always been a strong component of just speaking to anybody and, and everybody as much as I, I can. And um, so, yeah, so there's been a lot of great reception to it. Um, and, uh, and a lot of amazing people have already um, um, contributed to, um, um, to, the, to the contribution, which I thank you very much for that. So, uh, uh, like I said, ICE, because of COVID-19 and still millions of people are out of work, my, myself included. Um, so like the sliding scale, even though I said it at $30 is that, base, is that base, but it's a sliding scale. So if you really are in a situation where you can only afford, comfortably afford to be able to get five to $10, that's fine, that's great. Um, if you are in a position to where you can provide, you know, $30 or more, then that's that's great and that's also awesome as well. So really, you know, price is really not an issue um, with this because I really do want everyone to be able to get access to this. Um, a few uh, housekeeping things: I will not be recording these workshop sessions because I want to provide a safe space for participants to be able to to talk and express themselves without fear of someone in some part of the world, you know, thinking negatively on them because they were being honest with their, with their feelings about certain, with certain topics that um, we, we will wind up talking about. So I will not be recording just for that purpose. Um, and I won't be doing a separate recording by itself because the whole purpose of this workshop is to be active and to talk and to, um, and to discuss. Uh, these very important issues so i won't be doing a private um uh recording of this where it's just the uh of uh, just the just the notes um you as far as like um attending the event it's the attendance is unlimited you don't need to make any reservations so just pick a day one of the two days um the reason i have two days is because life happens Things happen, so if you were, say, planning on coming on a Saturday and something comes up, then you have the Sunday to join, or vice versa. If you were planning on Sunday, something happened, like a meeting, you know, got extended, a, a pre-scheduled meeting got, it, got extended, then come on Saturday. And just make sure you pick one of the days, because the information will be the same on both dates. All right, information, same on both days to kind of spread out the attendance and so everyone can at least get a chance to to participate um in the uh in the active uh, conversation uh, back and forth conversation um <clears throat> uh, something that i'm going to make a, uh, an update post today about um i'm going to start on the hour so that's very important 
And, and I will continuously remind people of this. So as an example, I'm going to use New York City as an example because that's where I live. So on Saturday, I'm starting at 8 o'clock. And, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the, 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 the meeting half an hour early. So from 7.30 to 8 o'clock, sorry, I'm going, to have, I'm going to open it up so people can filter in through that 30-minute time frame. The moment it hits 8 o'clock, I'm not allowing any more people to join in. No more people at all. Because it'd be very disruptive to have someone jump in when, let's say, we're at part three and then they miss all the beginning part. It isn't really fair to the participants that showed up on time and that also expressed themselves. And two, you know, I want people to be able to have a rapport with each other from the very beginning. And when someone jumps in at the last minute or jumps in late, it kind of kills that, that, that rapport and comfortability that we all have with each other already um, from the beginning. So please, we're going to start on the hour. I'm going to open it up 30 minutes before, so wherever you are in the world. Um, whatever time I have for you, think 30 minutes before that, I'm going to open it up for everyone to join in, to get comfortable, comfortable with one another. And then on the hour, we're going to start. And no, no late people are going to be um, accepted into it. So if you are definitely one of the individuals that were so gracious enough to contribute ahead of time, please come and between that 30 minute time frame, once eight o'clock hits, I'm not letting, I'm not allowing anybody to join in. Once again, I'm going to repeat all of this in the post um, on the event pages and things like that. So I want to just say it here first, but I'm going to keep on reminding people about that. Yeah, a lot of important housekeeping there. One yeah. thing I'm really excited about virtual format means anyone in the world can join. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do when 200 people show up? Well, uh, and that's the, and that was the idea is, is for this to be global. I really, from the onset, I wanted this to be a global workshop um, and not just re relegated to one, to one part of the planet. Uh, if 200 people show up, then yes, um, I am putting it out here first and I will make a couple of posts about this, but I am asking for um, at least four volunteers, I think four people would be enough to help um, moderate certain things. So four volunteers to kind of help me um, uh, keep an eye on the participants and things like that. So if, uh, so coming up for next weekend, um, if you would like to just need uh, two more people to help out for both days um, or for one of the days, whichever is fine. So you can private uh, message me on Facebook and I will see the, see the message. So just Odysseus Baylor on Facebook. Um, so I am looking for two more volunteers for next weekend. I already have two now. Um, but for the following weekend, for June 20th and 21st with the rest of the world, um, I would like four volunteers as well. If you are in the States, um, I, I will be going on at 10 a.m. So preferably um, having some volunteers that are international would be would be very helpful. Um, so in that way, I'm not asking people over here to wake up at six or seven or five o'clock in the morning to um, to help facilitate. So so yeah. So if you would like to um, volunteer to help uh, regulate um, the, the the group breakouts and things like that, I would greatly appreciate it. To um, you know, uh, if people have questions and I don't see the questions, to say so and so has a question and then I can respond to it. Um, and also to, even though I don't think this is going to happen, um, also to help facilitate in case if someone is becoming disruptive in this workshop, um, to uh, bring it to my attention or uh, just give you the, the, um, the permission to, to boot that individual out of, out of the workshop if I can't um, hear or see what they are doing. So, uh, which is which is a thing. Um, once again, safe space. So I will have no issue kicking anybody out if they are being too disruptive or too or dismissive or inappropriate to myself, the other um, co-host, or the participants in the uh, workshop. And that is, you know, no negotiating on that. 
Um, I really appreciate yeah. all the care you're taking to both put together this workshop, but you know, protect the work that people are putting in to attend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's that, that's the thing. It's it's. I've always been against people shouting down at other people. Me personally, I can't speak for everyone else, but for me personally, I believe that if you're going to to call someone out on their on on whatever on whatever issue or thing that they're doing, then it's good to also educate them on why you're calling them out on that issue. You know, um, I've always been a firm believer that person myself. That's what I try to do myself in my post things that I make from time to time. Um, but at the same time, not holding hands and not handling with kid gloves, but just being like, hey, that wasn't cool. This is why it isn't cool because because of these things that happened in the past is why this isn't cool to say this or do or to do this kind of action. But just to shout down at people or to yell at people is I'm not I'm not I'm not down with that. I personally never been down with that. Um, some people that's like, that's their thing. And that's, you know, fine. Do you, and, and that's your, that's your right as a human being. But for me, I won't allow coats like, we'll stop. I won't allow someone else to be disruptive during this work. The purpose of providing that encouragement. So one disruptive person will cause someone that would, that might want it to speak up. Now it's like, I'm not going to speak up now because I just saw that happen. Oh, that is something I'm going to nip in the butt right away. Not, uh, no, no, you know, no apologies for it. So putting that out there. Um, also, uh, I'm, I'm right now with that too. But it is important for people to feel, to feel safe expressing what they want to express without, without the, without the negative ire or the backlash, uh, you know, that might come, that might come. Um, so it's a learning opportunity for us to learn. And for that to happen, we're going to have to hear things and deal with things that's going to be uncomfortable, unfortunately. Well, thank you again for all of the work you're doing. Um, for you listeners out there, if you are looking to join these workshops, check out um, all the links are below. Um, and I look forward um, to seeing what happens next. Yes. And thank you very much for, uh, for this interview. And I look forward to uh, speaking with you. And hopefully dancing with you and everyone else out there in the world whenever we can be in close vicinity of one another again. Fun time, me. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, I have confidence that that is going to happen. We will be able to dance with each other again, you know, uh, somewhere in the world, you know? Yes. Yeah.